in this video we just want to talk about back titration so what is back titration okay so first of all we need to understand what titration is so we do know that basically titration involves um, the reaction between a substance of a non concentration so let's say we have a of a non concentration being reacted with b of non concentration so after the reaction we're able to determine how much of b is required to react with a okay so we'll be able to use the number of moles of b and then we'll apply the more ratios to be able with the amount of a that was available to determine the concentration that is the basic idea of back of, of titration that is now back titration on the other hand involves you having to react to reactions okay so back titration involves uh, the reaction between a substance of a non concentration a non concentration being reacted with a substance of non concentration in this case let's say b to give a certain reactants let's say c and d now the reactant which is b of non concentration is supposed to be in excess so back titration involves the reaction of the substance of a non concentration with a substance of non concentration yet in excess okay so what happens is the one that is in excess is going to react in another reaction. The uh, B in this case was in excess. So let's say we react with um, another reactant. Uh, let's say maybe D, maybe E. And then we get our other products. Okay. So our area of interest is we get to focus on the excess reactant. So it is appearing in two reactions. So we call it back titration because we start from a second reaction. So E is supposed to be of non what concentration. So we use titration to determine the volume required of E. So we'll be able to determine the number of moles of our E. Now the number of moles of E using stoichiometers, we're able to determine how much of B was required. Now notice that the amount of B that reacts in the second reaction represents the amount of it that was in excess. And at the start of the first experiment, we knew how much was available, the initial concentration and also its volume. So we can subtract the initial number of moles minus the excess number of moles determined using titration to give us the amount of moles that had reacted in the first reaction of B. So the basic idea is that back titration helps us determine the amount of moles of the excess reagent that had reacted in the first reaction. And then we can use stoichiometry to determine how many moles of the substance of a non concentration in this case a had reacted so if we have a number of moles and let's assume they had given us the mass we're able to find the molar mass if they had given us the volume we're able to find the concentration and that is the basic idea that lies behind back titration and now we're going to look at a certain example to help us understand what this is all about okay so feel free to try out this question Okay, so the question says a hundred, a 1.00 gram sample of a metal X uh, that is known to form uh, X2 plus ions was added to 100 cubic centimeters of 0 0.5 more decimeter of uh, sulfuric acid. Okay, so we've been given the volume and the concentration of sulfuric acid. It was reacting with a metal X that forms X2 plus 2 ions. So we've been given the first uh, reaction there. We can write the equation. So we we'll use it in the form of X. So I have X2 plus as a metal reacting with what sulfuric acid now it is very important for us to realize that sulfuric acid or the sulfate has got a charge of a two minus okay so the products that we expect when you have a metal reacting with an acid we expect a salt to be formed so the salt is going to be between the metal and the sulfate now realize that they all have a two so we are going to be in the ratio of 1 to 1. So we just have X S O4 as a, as a salt plus hydrogen gas. Now, if you look at the, this equation, is it balanced or not balanced? This is the balance, right? Okay. So in our first reaction, initially we are given the volume of our sulfuric acid. Okay. The information is basically all there. So we use it to find the number of moles that were initially present. For sulfuric acid 
how do we do that? So our concentration is being given to be 0 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed. Decimeter cubed is the same as liters. So we're multiplying by 100 cubic centimeters. Now we can divide the cubic centimeters by 1,000 to get what? Our decimeter volume. So we're going to divide it by 1,000. For every 1,000, for every decimeter cubed, there is 1,000 cubic centimeters. Or in other terms, if you want, you don't want to do obvious complicated stuff. It's not even complicated, by the way. You can just change the unit to decimeter cubed and then divide by 1,000. So a decimeter cubed is going to go, and then you end up with um, 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.5. So I'm getting 0 0.05 moles. So these were the number of moles of our sulfuric acid that were initially present in the first reaction. Now notice that these moles are not basically, and do, do not represent the amount of moles that had reacted because Remember that the limiting reagent in this case is the metal, but we don't know the metal. Okay, we don't know how much of the metal had reacted, so we can't assume to say the 0 0.05 moles had reacted. Moreover, we've been told the sulfuric acid still reacted even in the second reaction, implying that not all these moles were used. Up. So we'll call that to be initial. Now we'll go to the second part of uh, the experiment. Now, after all the metal had reacted, so since the all metal had reacted, it tells us it's one that was limiting. The remaining acid required fed 4.40 cubic centimeters of 0 0.5 more of sodium hydroxide. So we have another reaction now. This is a reaction between our, our, our same acid again, which was in excess, now reacting with uh, sodium hydroxide. Okay, so we call this the dichrotic acid because it uses two hydrogen atoms. So we expect salt plus water being produced, right? So sodium will react with sulfate. Now sodium is in group one, it has got a charge of a one, reacting with SO4, which has got a charge of two. So we end up having sodium to sulfate. Plus what? Plus water. Okay, there we are. So what do we do at that point? Is, is, is the equation balanced? Realize, observe that we have got a 2 on the sodium there. So it's supposed to add a 2 on the sodium hydroxide part. Is that all? Okay. So we'll have to, again, add a 2 on the water part so that we balance it out. So <clears throat> the main important aspect was observing the more ratios between the acid and also the sodium hydroxide. Now we've been given information about the sodium hydroxide. We've been given its concentration and also its volume. So I want to find the number of moles. So number of moles of sodium hydroxide are equal to 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 more the decimeter cubed. We're multiplying against the volume, which is supposed to be divided by 1,000, so that we can have our answer, our volume, in decimeter cubed, which is equivalent to liters, right? So quickly, the 3.40 divided by 1,000 multiplied by 0 0.5. So the decimeter cubed go away. Now uh, the answer what I'm getting is the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, uh, basically 0 0.0167 moles. Now, notice that we are not interested in the sodium hydroxide. Instead, we are interested in the what? In the acid that was in excess because it is one that was reacting in the first reaction. So these guys are in the ratio of one to two. Okay, take note of that. So we are saying our sodium, sorry, our sulfuric acid H2SO4 compared to sodium hydroxide, these guys are in the ratio of one to two. So for every mole of the sulfuric acid, there are, there are two moles of what? Two moles of sodium hydroxide. So we'll put X on the part for the sulfuric acid. So what we need to know is 
the number of moles is going to be out. So if we get to cross multiply, we have 2x being equal to 0 0.0167. Remember the number of moles that we had calculated were for the sodium hydroxide. So if we divide by the 2, we'll get now the number of moles of what? Of our sulfuric acid. So I'm getting 8.35 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles. Okay. So we found the number of moles of the sulfuric acid that was reacting in the second reaction. We can call it the number of moles that were in what? In excess. Okay. So we have a number of moles of sulfuric acid that were in excess. And then we also have the number of moles that were initially present in the first reaction. So think of it in this way. This is what you add initially. In the second reaction, this is how much was available. So a difference gives you how much was used up in the first reaction. So we are supposed to subtract the two. Subtract the two to basically get the difference of how much I've reacted. So how much of the H2SO4 had reacted? Is going to be the difference of the two. So 0 0.05, which was initially present, minus how much was left over, what are we going to get? So the answer what I'm getting is 0 0.04165 moles. These are the number of moles that were uh, that had reacted in the first reaction, reducing the initial to the excess from the in the second reaction. I think this is what is important. If you're able to get to that point every time you have um, back to equation, question, then you're good to go. So at this point, we now have a number of moles that had reacted in the first reaction, which was our area of interest. We're now able to use the more ratios to determine the number of moles of uh, our metal there. Now observe one thing. These guys are in the ratio of one to one, right? So the number of moles that we calculated was sulfuric acid that had reacted is equivalent to the number of moles of the metal that I also reacted. So we can just change this to be equivalent to the moles of X as our metal. Now realize, observe again in the question that given us a mass of one gram. So we have the mass, we have the number of moles. We are able to find the molar mass. Okay. So the molar mass, the units are grams per mole. So we'll just divide our one gram by the number of moles, 0 0.04165 moles. So units are going to give us grams per mole. So one divided by 0 0.04165. So the answer what I'm getting after dividing, I'm getting 24.0096 grams per mole. Now if you observe our question, the least number of significant figures were how many? can say three. So 24.0 grams per mole becomes our answer. Now this is a very simple actual case. So if you check your predictable, which element has got a molar mass of that of 24? So you, you realize that the answer the molar mass of four is actually what? <laughs> Excuse me. It's magnesium, not so. Because magnesium is 12, then 24. So basically, this is the demonstration of uh, of how we get to work with back to equation. And I hope you enjoyed the video.